We gotta get more boosts so we can get that better latency. Let's move to Japan where the infrastructure is better. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and cloud gaming makes sense. The infrastructure is better. The public transit is better. The xenophobia is somehow worse, but hey. <laughs> or better, depending on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to your favorite xenophobic podcast. We're xenophiles. We're playing Xeno Gears adjacent game. I wish we were playing Xeno Gears. I'm watching Xenon Girl of the 21st Century. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is there a new Xena? Oh, there really should be. Oh, there should be. Zeus Lapidus, Carl. What? Xena Gears. Xena Gears, hell yeah, let's go. Anyway, this is the Every FNFF Podcast. We're not xenophobic. Allegedly. Allegedly we are a podcast. Some would, some folks have said that we're a podcast. Uh, I'm Carl Germ. I'm Curtis. I'm Alex. We're going in real cold with these intros recently because <laughs> there's not a whole lot to talk about in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So how was your weekend? What'd you do? <laughs> how about that Nintendo Direct that happened weeks ago, guys? <laughs> <laughs> or mere moments ago for us. Ooh. Ooh. But I guess speaking of weeks ago, what what happened last week on the on the pod? We saw uh, we, we, we covered some dogs. Um The Hounds of Love. Yeah, so we're jumping. playing through uh Doors of Cumberbund this week where just finally made it to Edge after killing a bunch of dogs. Yeah. Edge, which is a a place that's on the edge of destruction or whatever the fuck. Yeah, other side of Pittsburgh. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> As we've established. I like how this has established that, like, so this is three years after the events of Final Fantasy VII. And there's a whole new town. Yeah, yeah I'm is, sure is, there's, like, if... Well, if, if Final Fantasy VII takes place on a planet... Gaia? D Gaia. Uh, <laughs> do we have to assume that every town we visited is every town that exists? Or is yeah. it like a abridged version of the globe? I guess, I mean, I, we really can't <laughs> split hairs too much on it. I think your approximation of it makes way more sense because also, yeah, we saw the entire planet. We saw all of the world. We walked around all of it and stuff. But we were also like enormous like we like cloud standing outside of calm. <laughs> wow, like how do you get so big? Enormous, and then you know. So no, I, I choose to believe that we met and talked to every single person on the entire Earth. Yeah, every single I person. I th yeah, I think like the the total population of the entire planet is like two hundred. <laughs> yeah, which is very concerning because here we learn that at least five hundred people are disappearing. <laughs> That's in right. The blink of an eye. Yeah, I mean, just like a new college or something that opened up <laughs> after its meteor fall. Efficiency housing and all that stuff. <laughs> or maybe it's like a new title or something. I don't know. Who knows? The important thing say? is none of it's important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The important thing is none of this matters. We have we have lots of suspending of disbelief going on, and uh, that's the way that you should play this game because it's really silly and and most games, honestly, it'll, it'll be much more fun. Yeah, pretty much every game. Speaking of silly, what y'all think about this intro cutscene <laughs> that starts today off? Um, I mean, we I think we covered it kind of right. We covered the part where uh, Rosso's talking. Yeah, we accidentally covered a cutscene after the title screen, but um, but the next scene, I mean, yeah, it's just Vincent walks into oh, yeah. Edge. Everything is silent as the title ends. No, oh, Silent Edge, Chapter Three. It's raining. It's foggy. Um, he's peering around a corner, and a lady in a lab coat holds a gun up to his head. Right, <laughs> the most dressed for the situation lady uh, <laughs> she's listen here's the thing about this character she's just one of those like extremely online leftist gun girls that were like super <laughs> popular like several years ago where they were just like the right uh, the the what's it called caitlin bennett or whatever the fuck her yeah, name was yeah. they're like the right's not the only ones who have guns yeah so that's who we meet but her garb is uh she's wearing glasses she's wearing what looks like a blitz ball uh, dress. Oh yeah, it's very blissful. She has uh, some kind of dress going on. Again, like they need to make sure you can see the thighs. So like the like Titus's shorts. There's like a part where it's just a belt holding the bottom part of the skirt up. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a mini skirt with a slightly smaller mini skirt underneath it that makes it kind of give you the sense that it's more of like a, a like sort of a dress, I guess. Yeah, but, but they're not like layered though. No. It's not like one under like when, he, when Carl says under the other one, he means like a full like several inches down. <laughs> it's a, it's a mini skirt leg 
then more skirt. And then on top of that, a full ass lab coat. Yeah. Yeah. Noticeably in this lab coat, only one uh, arm is in a sleeve, which is kind of like a, a little bit of an Aran situation, yeah. which is kind of yeah. cool. Mm. This is the most like the most things that a character could have about them. Also, notably, she has one eye. Oh, so, yeah. Like, or at least one closed. One, one true, closed. True. Super cool. They probably so, wanted to give her an eye patch at some point, but it's like when you like design a character and you're like, "What is this character's thing going to be? Like, what's going to make their look special?" Right? And they were just like, "What? Well, every single part of this character has to be the thing." Yeah. <laughs> so you'd be like, "Who's the character with the eye? Who's the character with the lab coat? Who's the character that has the crazy fucking like bathing suit dress on? <laughs> fucking walking around in heels, shooting guns, very oh, yeah. uncomfortable looking heels. I think it was just how they modeled the feet, but they just." look really uncomfortable also her lab coat does have the giant name tag on it too <laughs> so like no stealth <laughs> right like <laughs> this is not who you would want to do like a metal gear solid mission with they just have their like hi my name is like Hello there. Still. here's a list of all my personal fears and the time <laughs> i go to sleep and my um location <laughs> at all times throughout the day yeah um, I do want to talk about the um, how we found out that there is the identification card there because it's yeah. you know to point out like Vincent's like oh okay like she immediately pulls a gun on Vincent and points it at his head and he does the same and then he notices her ID card that says uh, WRO but yeah. the shot that is done <laughs> they make sure to pan past the breasts as they yep. zoom in on the uh, the the lab coat. Um, yep. ID card. They waste no camera movement. Yeah. No. Make sure you get a mouthful. There's some hornry, hornry camera going on. Yeah, for sure. Did Nomura, no, Nomura didn't direct this. He actually directed the, uh, Advent Children. I realized. <laughs> oh, he directed Advent Children. I didn't realize that. I figured he did character design for this, though. I think. Oh yeah, of course. So it's, it has he really belts got and to... straps and asymmetricalness. Yeah, he got to yeah. spread his wings on this one. Your WRO. Who's asking? Yeah, it's very cheesy dialogue, which is great. Oh, it's so good. I love the cheesy dialogue so much. Vincent Valentine. Reeves sent me. My apologies. Shilua Rui of the WRO. The commissioner has told me much about you. But apparently not what he looks like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're Vincent Valentine, one of the one of the seven or eight heroes who saved the world three you years ago. You can mix ago. a little Shalula with Coke at the bar. Makes it really <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Mm. But it's just funny that like she would not know who he is just by looking at him. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. he's a very noticeable person, especially in a world where it's... Reeve like talks him up but mentions nothing about his style. Especially in a PS2 world where most of the people are just copy pasted assets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like he is the the most highly rendered thing, and she's like, "Who are you?" But uh, as she specks off, you do see that she does have a um either robotic or prosthetic arm. Indeed. Yeah. It doesn't look like it's like animatronic or anything. It's just kind of a, a filler yeah. for now. It's uh it's a really cool character design. All like yeah. Namora horny stuff aside, it's a cool looking character. She kinda looks like Quistus from FF eight with I uh, see it. with uh, one eye closed and way less clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> My only justification for this uh, ridiculous outfit is that um if you have one arm it makes going to the bathroom a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> so there is that. But yeah, she um Vin Vincent asks her, like, hey, what's going on here? Because he doesn't see anybody around, right? Like Vincent's like, yeah, nothing nothing. She's like, it's a PS2, we can't render too many characters on the screen. Yet. <laughs> But uh, she says, that's what I'd like to know. I'm, I'm here on official business as well, uh, but something's not right. It's too quiet. And she's seen no trace of deep ground. She's seen none of the other people. There should be 500 people living here, which is not a lot for a city that has like multi-level housing. Yeah. 500 people. It is like at least twice the percent, uh, the uh, population of Final Fantasy VII original, though. Yeah, it's fair. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... She just kind of is like, well, I have business to attend to. I have to get out of here. And uh, Vincent's like, oh, what business? And <laughs> I love this so much. Yeah. She turns around and says, oh, the commissioner tells me that I'm wasting my time searching. And Vincent says, searching for what? And she goes, for my reason to live. My reason to live. And then it's walks away. so <laughs> fucking dumb. I love it. It's so, like, broody. It's so, like, angsty. And it's so good. Because I want to know more. I'm like, damn. 
Something's Ugh. going on in this character's past. Everything she says is just like baiting him, you know? I know, I know. It's like, I gotta go back to work. Like, what kind of work? Searching. So, what, what, like, <laughs> for my reason to live. I'm looking up uh, towns with small populations. Well, so, so current, there is a place, the closest I can find within 30 seconds of Googling is uh, <laughs> Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, with a population of about 600. Oh, well. Let's go. There are definitely some places in uh, eastern Kentucky. Uh, that have like very very low populations, but like they don't look like Edge. <laughs> they don't they don't have like multifamily housing and shit. There is a um, Corey designed this place. <laughs> there's a there's a place in Japan. I, I believe it's called uh, Nagoro, that uh, was once like kind of like not a large population or anything, but over the years, yeah, it used to have uh, like more than 300 residents, and today there are only 27. Oh, wow. It's just like everything kind of picked up. But the, the cool thing about this town is that one of the residents there, after her father passed away, she like made a scarecrow just of him and put it, it like around town just to, as like her way of kind of coping. And, and then she kind of just enjoyed doing that. So she just continued doing it. So now the population of scarecrows in the town vastly out, <laughs> outweigh the, the number of people who actually live there. So it's just a scarecrow village. It's super Is cool. Is this like an episode of Over the Garden Wall? Yeah, it seriously sounds like it, right? So it, it's super, that. super cool. That rules. Yeah. I went to Centralia not too long ago and there's I think oh, yeah. still like nine people living there. How many scarecrows they got there? I didn't see any scarecrows. We should see them. Yo, should really should be more. New mission for the podcast. We're going to build <laughs> scarecrows and just bring them to Centralia and set them up. Donate a scarecrow there. to us today. Give us a scarecrow. Give us a scarecrow. We're giving you this podcast Give us your for free. scarecrows. Rate us five scarecrows on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, worth, worth checking uh, out. But anyway, cool. the map. Um, so this is what I wanted to talk about my situation playing this game. Uh so as you all know, I had not done the homework until just before the podcast today. Like Based. I literally woke up and immediately like was like, no time for bathroom, no time for anything. Just kind of go play Dirge of Cerberus. <laughs> <laughs> and so I woke up, played some Dirge of Cerberus. So like, like I said, the first episode, I'm playing it on an emulator right now. And uh, for whatever reason, my controller was not working. Like when I plugged it in, I was like, what is happening? Why is my controller not doing what it should do? Like some of the buttons were mapped to the wrong place and stuff. So I cleared the, um, what do you call it? I cleared the uh, the settings, I cleared the mapping. So I cleared the mapping, I remapped it, and you know I was kind of under the gun because we needed to record, so I was like, oh, I need to get this done fast. And it was like, sorry, cannot write config file, like just unable to write config. And I was like, oh, come on. So I'm looking up online, what can I do, blah, 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 blah. I went and got a different controller out that mostly worked to the mappings I already had, except... I could not look to the right. Oh my god, <laughs> that's so, like reverse Zoolander. So I played <laughs> this entire section without being able to aim to the right. And so like my options are either like walk to the right far enough to actually shoot the person or turn all the way around and that's, then go uh, for another shot. And so I played this entire section only being able to look and move left. Keep an eye out for that. Uh, Curtis games with two left feet. <laughs> the viral new video on YouTube of Curtis's challenge <laughs> run. He's only using half A presses and <laughs> only turning left. 360 no scoping every enemy. <laughs> yeah, can we have do no right percent? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, this section was very annoying. Th this to me. runs for all the lefties, <laughs> <laughs> especially for a section coming up. It was very annoying. Uh, but, yeah, um, holy shit, that sounds like a fucking nightmare. I did get through it, though, so... <laughs> That's how Kitase wanted you to play it. That's his uh, original vision. So the first the first thing he wanted to do is turn right. Because <laughs> 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 immediately, when, once we start the uh, stage... There's a corridor to the right that we can go down and get some items. Man, that's how dedicated to the cause Curtis is. He just <laughs> refuses to go any... Uh, r if he has to go right at all, he will not. He yeah. is firmly on the left. <laughs> that's exactly right. We cannot push Curtis right. <laughs> Take three lefts and make it right. So anyway, this mission sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright. I don't know. I didn't mind this part of it. Like, there's only, to me, there's only one part of the uh, the entire section that, like, was not great. But this one I didn't mind, because, like, the, the beginning of it isn't very 
big. There's like some corridors. There's some like stairs we can go up on top of and kind of walk around these catwalks. But it's there's a very not tightly knit area. I realize like there's some times where yeah. I could see areas I can't access yet. Yeah, which like because I thought it would be more like calm where like you're just going from one section of the map to the next. But this actually kind of folds back in on itself sometimes. Yeah. But either way, yeah, you go down a corridor, uh, you immediately get ambushed by a few of those uh, doggos. Yeah. Yeah. There's like four to six of them. I think there's even a part where there's two of them fighting each other. You can just like big, you just <laughs> walk by them and they won't even see you. <laughs> Base. They're just vibing. But uh, eventually we come across on a fallen WRO soldier, right? Yeah. Yes. And uh, miraculously. Quick dumb question. What does WRO stand for? Because I do not remember. R- world re- yeah. Rejuvenation. Oh, World re- Rejuvenation. World Regenesis. Building back better. World Regenesis Organization. Okay. Oh. That, that sounds a little more ominous than rejuvenation. Doesn't it? It's volunteers, though. That's cool. Conscripted volunteers. Wait, look at the badge. It has like a... I can't tell if it's a Moogle or like a little... Uh, oh, yeah. A doggo. Maybe a little... It could be a little chocobo because it has like talons at the bottom. Yeah. And it has like yeah. the like, little hair feathers that chocobos often have. It's like Tails, Tails Prower. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> it, it does. does look... yeah. Oh, you know what? No, you know, it's probably Ketchy. Maybe. Yeah, the founder is... Reeve, so it's oh, that makes it's, sense. He used his mascot as he used his VTuber as the mascot for the entire <laughs> organization. Okay, he was like, I put a lot of money into this logo, so I'm just gonna go with it. My brand. <laughs> well, yeah, we we find the uh, the wounded WRO soldier, and he's doing ellipses speaking as is like so Always fantastic. Good. Always and, like, good in a Final Fantasy game. I love this. This stuff is fine when it's like a non voice acted game, but in a voice acted game, I'm like, oh yeah. boy. <laughs> so he like very slowly just goes through each word and then there's a pause and he just says like the nouns of a sentence. So he's just like ambushed by soldier in red squad <laughs> wiped out warehouse on the <laughs> edge of town. On the they edge of the edge. We're gathering. <laughs> Civilians. Yeah. And then he finally dies. <laughs> he dies and transforms into a key card because now we get a key card and his body is nowhere <laughs> right. to be found. So in my brain, he, he just turns. You're right. Yeah. Like the uh, camera pans up. Well, Vincent does the thing where he brushes his hands over his eyes to close them so you know he's dead. Then the camera dramatically pulls up. And then we're snapped back to gameplay and there's just a key card where the dead body was. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. At first glance, it might look like he's doing the nice honorable thing of closing the eyes of the dead to show your respect. Really, he's using black magic to turn him into a key card for his own <laughs> progression throughout this this town. I actually think the progression's kind of neat here, too, because the yeah. the gate that we're supposed to use is actually back where we started at. So we have to, like, backtrack back to where it was. And the gate... I have a problem with this gate. Do you? Well, it was because, like, every time I pass through a gate, my instinct is just to run forward. Yeah, Yeah. I was going to say. So, like, it was like, wait a second. Yeah. Dead end. I turn to the left, and there's just. You open the gate, and there's nowhere to go. It's just like a little, like, tiny little square. I thought that this was an elaborate setup for, like, because we were talking about the key cards before, where, like, if you used one, you immediately got another one. So you could get all of the items around there. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was the same sort of thing and I was like, That's fuck, what I did too. I just lock myself out of like, like, did I have to come back here later and stuff? And like the reason that it, it you, you'd be forgiven to overlook this door that you can go in because like the backgrounds in this game are very bland and plain. Like it's a PS2 game, you know? And yeah. It kind of just looks... All the doors are very flush against the wall. It looks like a texture. It looks like uh, a texture. So I was just like, fuck. And then I was like, oh wait, shit. Here's, it's a door. Yeah. Like, they should have just made that door at the end of the hallway and then they would have accidentally run into it I'm like oh look a door instead of me missing it yeah it's on your around. left yeah which is good news for Curtis <laughs> exactly that's why I was able to see it because I could actually turn in that direction he probably just didn't want to like introduce another mechanic of like why don't we just give him like a door key instead yeah, yeah they're like fuck it we gotta ship this in six weeks <laughs> but uh yeah you can go into this building and there's uh there's some of the loveless posters are there very yeah. good nice nice um, little nod lots of boxes yeah, yeah loveless is uh what is that June 25th is playing. Put it on my calendar. We're all watching it together, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Wait, wait, wait. What? Oh, okay. So is it the... They actually have a date on the Loveless poster, you mean? Yeah. It does. Oh, it says, okay. Uh, 625, 18 o'clock. Nice. See you there. Yeah, that's 6 p.m. Um, but in here, I think we also find the Hydra frame. We do find the Hydra. Hell yes. Indeed. 
uh, which I used quite a bit. It's like a rifle. It's a rifle base. Yep. Yeah. So which is very good. Handy. I immediately put the long barrel on it. Yep. Same. And I also put the sniper scope on it. So yep, we same. Just have a, oh yeah. Which I is like a, the, a nice thing about this too is that doesn't use it up like you. If you wanted to, you could put all of that shit on every one of your guns. Like yeah. it wouldn't make sense to, but it's not like a single use thing. So yeah. like I guess when Vincent is juggling through his very large <laughs> and probably heavy guns, he's also able to just like quickly <laughs> all switch all of the scopes if he needs to. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good. Just based. holding all his like it's like camera gear. He just has like all these <laughs> lens, lenses and bodies. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, it makes just sense. Put some on. What I like about the the sniper scope too is that like when you're doing normal aiming, it doesn't make you look down the scope. So you can still shoot from the hip and aim pretty well without actually having to look down the scope every time. Pretty strong, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of zooming, um, I tried out um, a very difficult speed strat today. Oh. That was found uh, four months ago. So it's actually quite Damn, recent. Damn, that's awesome. This is very recent. This is actually probably because of Shadamp. Um, but apparently there is a bug that was found that if you um, do a single jump and then alternate zoom and melee really fast, you can just fly. What? <laughs> oh my god, I'm definitely going to learn how to do that. Uh, I kind of want to like you can pull up the game can... right now while we're recording and just like <laughs> do it. It's very hard to do, so you have to, because by default the zoom is like one of the uh, the stick yeah. clicks, so yeah. I, I thought I remapped it to like the L1. Okay, which, okay. Yeah, that probably makes it easier. Because that's actually I actually keep accidentally using my magic that way. Me but too! Because yeah. there's a part where like, I wonder if I can just fly over this gate if I can just like. What, were you able to or? Uh, it's really hard to do because it, it's probably like frame perfect or whatever, and you probably have to. Change it's very it. fast, and if you do it too fast, um, you'll accidentally melee, and then it'll just cancel out the into all the momentum you've got going up. So I was trying to do it on a macro, but it just didn't have time before we recorded. Gotcha. Yeah, no, that sounds super cool though. It's, it reminds me of zombie fun. hovering uh, in Wind Waker from the sounds of yeah, it. Yeah, there's a lot of things where you just like skip the uh, dragonfly fight. <laughs> you oh, can just jump over the gate. That's incredible. <laughs> that's amazing. I love shit like that. It, it kind of reminds me of like the silly um, flying you used to be able to do in Half-Life 2 and that was like, the fastest way to just skip a level if you just like lifted up an item and dropped it over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of try to get on top of it while it's still in midair and yep. then you can pick it up and do it over and over again. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, it's called like Zoom hovering, I think. You can now yeah. beat Dirge of Cerberus with only 16 stars. <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully they don't patch that out by the next time we record an episode. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... So yeah, now we have a sniper rifle, which yep. is very handy because we're approaching the square. Yep. Which yep. Is, it's not only a square. I guess, oh, do you call a square if it isn't actually a square? I, I think there are like town circles, aren't they? Or, or are they just called roundabouts? Either way, the center of town, much like Calm. We it approach literally the roundabout. looks exactly like Calm. I was like, it oh. looks exactly like it. I was yeah. like, I wonder if I'm about to get into a boss fight of some sort. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so when we walk up to the area, um, the game kind of lets us know what's getting ready to happen. Like a little tutorial pops up. And tells us that we're in a sniper battle now. And so there's like a bunch of snipers along the rooftops in this square that are going to start shooting at us. And we kind of have to take them out first. But if we don't move, like if you just stand in one place, only one of the snipers is already firing at you. So you can just pick the rest off without them even noticing. Most of them. Oh, shit. I didn't even realize yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I do love the design of the snipers. They have a really cool kind of like. Yeah. They remind me of uh, Black Manta from Aquaman a little bit. They have like. These weird, like, scopes on the side of their head, but, like, a grill it, in the front to make them look yeah, kind of like It's alien. really cool. I like it, yeah. And they have, like, a big fin-type head, almost like a dinosaur. It's kind of neat. Yeah. But, yeah, like, from where you are standing, if you have the long barrel, the hydra, and the scope, you can basically pick off most of the guys just from right where you're, yeah. the cutscene ends. Yeah, I think it's the way to do it. I can't imagine playing this section on a, a shitty TV when this came out. Oh, my God, it would be so hard, yeah. I'm playing on emulator with 3X resolution. So I'm actually able to see everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering if like playing on like a CRT would actually make it a little easier to play. You think? I think on this would make it harder because you yeah, be like able to it's see it's the guys. very hard to see the guys. Like you have to zoom in and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's also like we're we're spoiled by high resolution and larger fields of yeah, vision. Being able to see dudes like most most <laughs> open world games now, like people can't most enemies can't see you and like uh, until you're like within 50 feet of them. Truly the only reason to have higher resolution is to see dudes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's Although true. it's worth noting uh, the first guy you see uh, 
maybe one of the first guys you shoot a sniper at, um, underneath them, as you see through your scope, is a nice little banner on the side of a building with cloud strife on it. Yeah, yeah. nice little Easter egg for all those Final Fantasy heads. Uh, Final Fantasy? What's that? <laughs> Just to remind you, this is Final Fantasy VII. There's like a yeah, cloud on the yellow banners. I saw some face-like po- headshots of uh, Aerith around town as well. Oh yeah, oh, I think I, I saw that as well. I, some chocobo signs on green. I, I do did like the see chocobo the, um, posters. The billboard that is advertising the Edge ETR, I think it is, which is like a, the Edge car. It says like below it, the Edge car. Drive oh, on a yeah. new road. <laughs> so, the Edge Eater. And get one of those today. It kind of does look like the fucking shitty Tesla Cybertruck or whatever. Yeah, there is it's more round. There's a poster <laughs> that um sort of looks uh, like you can see it almost looks like the the original cover of Final Fantasy VII, like that mm. shot of the the Shinra building. Yeah, it's pretty cool. There's a lot of low res like uh, posters in this game. I'm like trying to figure out what they are. I, I would love. I would love for there to be high res versions of them. But I don't know if there's that's... like a poster that says Edge Square Park, Edge Temple. Yeah, there's like a few events, a lot of cool little things. I think you said earlier there was one that looks like a Rocket Town or something like that. Um, yeah, there's some cool little set dressings around yeah. here. Yeah, which is which is nice because again, this is a very PS2 s game, <laughs> so yeah. all of, everything else is just kind of gray and just dingy looking so any it's very little... gray also very flat textures where i can't tell yeah like, is there a hole in front of me <laughs> <laughs> or is that just a wall because everything looks very similar yeah. that's awesome but we uh we we take care of the snipers which it's funny that you mentioned that if you just stand still the other ones don't see you because i heard snipers in hiding and immediately started being like oh i'm like running around <laughs> in circles i was like i was like if i keep moving they can't hit me i just went into halo mode i'm like if i stop moving i will get sniped and die <laughs> zigzag zigzag <laughs> um but after we do that we kind of just run around look at the posters and then um we c- we come up to a door and it opens and there's just like a little kid that's there yeah, yeah, we find him in like an alcove, kind of where like where we started. But there's a sniper on ground level with us near this kid. I think, right? Yeah. Once you shoot him, no, no. Wait, we find the we find the last sniper, and then as we turn around from the last sniper, who's actually on ground yeah. level with us, a kid runs by, and like we do follow him into that. Right. Door, right? I forgot that he runs by. Yeah. Pretty funny. First, he runs into the next alley, and two soldiers chase him, and we kill those two soldiers. And then he talks to us. Yeah, which you would think if there were soldiers who were trying to kill a small child and they have big guns and are twice the size of the kid that you'd probably want to make it over to that kid pretty quickly. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. No, I was no, just, just corner exploring him. around and then I was like, where the fuck did that kid go? And then like five minutes later, I found him and the soldiers <laughs> are just like there and he's like cowering. And I, was I like, guess they're like, oh, they're just menacing him. They're not, they're not like even like necessarily like trying to shoot them they're just like we're gonna spook this kid yeah but yeah you kill those guys and then it starts this very fun mission yeah it starts the repetition of this one instance of this word uh thanks (laughs) yeah god the kid thanks the one thanks sample that he has (laughs) it's weird because this whole interaction with vincent is completely like one-sided yeah it's like the warehouse i know how to get there it's through that gate i'm like do we want to go to the warehouse? Yeah, yeah. Vincent just kind of looks that direction. Like the warehouse was mentioned. And then uh, was the warehouse mentioned. Yeah, by the the dying. The kid asks if we have the card key, and Vincent just like looks down for a second and then back up, <laughs> and so he's like, oh, "Okay, I know who has the card key. You can follow me." Do you have the card key? And like Vincent, like almost shamedly, just like shakes his head. Like, he no. does. He, <laughs> no. <laughs> he kicks his feet. He kicks a can. No. <laughs> But yeah, kid says, come on, I know someone who does follow me. Uh, spoiler, it turns out it's just a soldier. Yeah, it's just yeah. a soldier. Yeah. This kid knows that this soldier has a card game. It's, it's very weird how it's worded because I thought like, oh, I know someone who does. I was like, oh, it's going to be like another, you know, some of the kids from town escaped getting captured or yeah, whatever's going yeah. on here. And you meet them and then they're like, here you go. Here's the key card. Like, good luck. But no, right, literally, right. You, he just directs you to like a room that you run into and there's a soldier and you just shoot him and then he <laughs> yeah, becomes a well, key Well, he basically sets you up to get ambushed. Like, oh, cool. So your, your friend's in here, right? And then you open it up and then you just get shot <laughs> in the fucking face. Yeah. Like, dude, you could have given me a heads up. But before that, this is basically just an escort mission. Yep. Right? We have to do yeah. a very, very close escort mission because this kid will not move unless you are within like arm's reach of him. Yeah. <laughs> it's real wild. He hold his hand very literally. Yeah. Although there is a, it's not, it's not the type of game where you can like run ahead and wait for him. Yeah. You will like, you need to like, 
stay behind him because I think most of the triggers of like people attacking will, will happen when he's in front of you. Yeah. yeah, and like the little dog guys will show up and try to like carry him off to like stop them. Oh, really? Although the very first one before he actually goes into the door when you're still in the square. Uh, some of the dog dudes will jump down and grab him and start walking away with him. And like the game is like, hey, you need to save him. But I couldn't turn the direction that I needed to to aim at them. So I kept spinning all the way around trying <laughs> to get them. And I kept missing. And the game would just like the dog guy would just stop and wait for me. <laughs> like the game was like, no, it's cool. Take your time. We'll be here. <laughs> I I really, really wish that you were recording that. That would have been so funny to see. <laughs> But uh, yeah, once we're up on the, so he takes us up on the roof and we kind of walk around through some of these like billboards that we were seeing earlier. And on the right, before the first billboard, there's a very thin corridor that you can fall off. Um, And if you fall off that, you go into a little like, not a maze, but a set of corridors that are blocked off by like chain link fences and doors. And you can get the materia floater. Yeah, in there. Gross. So, Which I think you yeah, might be able gross. to see earlier in the uh, in the level. There, um, I saw the same sort of briefcase style item yeah. behind a chain link fence, and I was trying to get it in the first area, and then I accidentally triggered the cutscene. It was just in the next area, and I was like, "Oh, I guess I have to backtrack to get that or something." And like, I I still haven't determined. Like, this game is very weird how it all interacts with one <laughs> another. So I don't know if this is actually the item that I'm thinking of, or if I just missed something else. But yeah, what the ma- materia floater does is. It's like an accessory that you put on your weapon that will increase the level of your materia by one. Yeah. Oh. So I guess that just turns fire into like fire. Yeah. yeah. Fire two. Fire, fire two. Fire dose. Um, but yeah, we get in a couple more fights like along the, the bridges and the walkways with this little kid trying to defend them. Yeah, there's the doggos. Then there's a few guys on platforms to your right yeah. from behind like street signs shooting at you and then finally there are guys like snipers across the yeah. plaza again that are shooting at you yeah and then yeah he leads you to get ambushed and you're fine <laughs> <laughs> but then you get the card key and you're able to use the card key to um you have a quick little like moment with him i think where he like has a little breakdown revealing that his uh parents are alive and he wants you to avenge their death oh, that's right vincent still doesn't say anything that's right. yeah and just leaves him alone in this plaza. It seems kind of non-committal. <laughs> this, this is. I don't know. I'm not sure if it's just like the writers. Like we don't want to characterize Vincent too much because we want the player to like project their feelings onto it. It's like the why people love the fucking Mandalorian because maybe can't he's just cool the time. and just, edgy. Or Samus Aaron, where everyone's just like, you'll see what you want to see. Yeah. In his face. yeah. But, but or if it's just like Steve Bloom did not have a lot enough time. <laughs> <laughs> they had an afternoon. He he caught he he charged by the word uh, at that point. So they were like, well, it's cooler if he's just brooding. I'm working on Clone Wars right now. You gotta keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, this this area is very interesting too because it seems like it would be an actual cool area for like this kind of fight, but in practice of it, it's. Like, it's not really anything that memorable. It's just like, oh, there's a sniper, I killed him. Oh, there's another sniper, I killed him. But there's, like, billboards that have, like, little pieces of it cut out, so it's, like, a window that you could use to have cover while shooting and stuff. But it's, like, you don't even need to use that. Like, you could even... Right. You probably didn't even notice that because it's, like, it's not really worth taking in because it's just, oh, here's the guys that I shoot and I shoot them. Yeah. And, like, the, uh, the enemies don't have, like... They don't instantaneously shoot you like once you're in line of sight or anything. Their aim is not perfect, but it's pretty fucking good. And so, like, even if you are hiding behind cover, sometimes you can just take shots. Yeah. Um, And they don't really do that much damage that I could recall. Like, it's I, I was never in a moment where I was like, oh, fuck, like, this is pretty tough. There's also, like, no feedback whatsoever if you get shot when you're looking down a scope. <laughs> like, you, you don't even know it. You just have to see that your HP is mysteriously going down. I think vibration is supposed to imply that. For me, I have vibration turned uh, I see on. So. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was one part, like, when I was, like, escorting the kid where the soldiers were shooting me from the right, and I had to, like, basically shoot down an alleyway to get them. Yeah. Where the gun... I My bolts were just kept hitting the railing yeah like, yeah i was like i'm not tall enough like, i think i'm jumping like, to make sure because half of my shots would just get blocked by the wall that's and, like, this is poor design and the- we're speaking of uh even though there are no railings on your left or anywhere there are still invisible walls so there's no way of falling off the platforms i found out oh really yeah because i was backtracking like making sure i got everything i just like cool i'm done i'm gonna jump down 
I can't. <laughs> I have <laughs> to actually let it go through and take the stairs. Yeah, That's you got to take the long way. And it, it's it's so funny, too, because, like, like we've talked about a couple times, we have a double jump. Like, Vincent, like, in the original game has flown around and stuff. But, like, some <laughs> obstacles are just slightly too high for him to double jump over it or fly over it. Like, yeah. the chain link fence that was, like, hiding the materia floater. Like, you can't jump over that, even though it looks like you could easily clear <laughs> it. You can't climb over it. And another thing that I found very funny is... The um, like when you're walking around with the kid and he's like leading you along like the catwalks and stuff, there's like small little ladders that are like not even up to Vincent's head. They're yeah. like short. So you can easily jump and like. But the game just doesn't let you. <laughs> yeah, you should be able to clear it with ease, but you have to climb up the ladder. And the modern little. Modern games let you at least jump onto the ladder, and this doesn't let you. You need to start from the bottom. Yeah, you have to start from the bottom and climb up. And Vincent somehow, even though this is the slowest fucking kid in the entire world, <laughs> who like basically is just crawling through this area and you have to like walk with him within a two foot radius, he climbs the ladder faster than Vincent does. <laughs> She's like, okay. <laughs> 10 out of 10. 10 um, out of 10. <laughs> Nomura's done it again. <laughs> but we can use the card key to go to the next area, which is kind of like a bigger, more complex redux of the first area, I would say. Um, where we are just kind of... There's more areas to kind of climb around. Yeah. There's more collapse structures, too. It's a little more war-ridden yeah. than, than we're used Toward to. Toward the it end of it, like there's, there's like some... Uh, maybe buildings like a highway or some shit that's been like collapsed um that we're able to walk around on yeah it it reminded me of the the train graveyard in the original where there's like that big girder that you have to walk on to to be able to like make your way through that area yeah um yeah there's also some cool items here you can get a couple like high potions and things there's like various ways to get into like back alleys and then onto catwalks that aren't immediately visible like you can't really see immediately how to get on them so there is a little like running around here and i think it's kind of cool yeah there is some cool exploration and stuff like I, before getting to this part um before opening the door i was able to see some of the boxes that you can get to and yeah. like i like did like a sniper shot i'm like oh maybe it's one of those easter egg things that we have to shoot to like unlock whatever um and i just like shot it and then i was like no it's just a briefcase that's probably holding like a high potion or something and then yeah. eventually i found it and i'm like oh okay cool like it kind of incentivizes uh exploring a little bit i guess but yeah there there is one um in the back right or the back left three times if you're me um <laughs> that has a briefcase with like three four thousand gill in it which is really useful like that's yeah a whole upgrade on a weapon yeah there's a few like behind the bar you yeah, always able to just steal a thousand gill yeah i think there's two places before and after uh saving the kid there was like just a thousand gill in a briefcase Ye- which is helpful because there is a uh, a shop yeah you can open all the uh, shops the rest of those doors after you do the kids little mission nice yeah gill rules everything around me that's right. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of hidden little nooks and crannies in here. I need to like backtrack and redo it because there's definitely some crates I was able to see and just could not figure out how to get to. I couldn't tell if it was before or after the gate. And that little yeah. like devastated area toward the very end of this area uh, with all the, the fallen down beams. There is a soldier who is off the map, like way out, who's shooting at you. And I couldn't figure out where he was because I was like, what is happening? Like, who is shooting at me? And I couldn't see who it was. So I was just like following the... um. There's like a little marker that pops up to show you what direction you're being shot from whenever you're shot. Yeah. And so I followed that and I was like, oh, okay, he's way, way out there, like w- like behind fences and stuff, somewhere you're not supposed to go. But it was kind of neat because like once you shoot him, if you're looking around in that area, you can find a memory capsule back there to shoot as well. So I was like, yeah, that's a cool way to bring your attention to that. Yeah, I think I'd. Got that one too. I think I found maybe three memory capsules. Found in this. three. I think that that sounds about chapter. right. I don't remember specifically, but I I have been keeping an eye out for them more. So it's neat. Um, I feel like in this mission, there's more like nods to where the memory capsules are. Like the game will do something or have something interesting. Yeah, it'll like guide you slightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'll see it because of that. So I thought that was actually pretty well done. Yes. Uh, um, another interesting thing about this area that again kind of to piggyback off of what I was saying earlier where they're like it seems like they set it up to be this cool like sniper fight where you take cover but (laughs) it wasn't really like implemented that well maybe that's better for like a first person experience which I think you can play this in Uh, I can't remember Um, but another thing that's very weird is that 
you can shoot windows out of places of like buildings that oh. I'm pretty sure you can't access. I, so I was like, oh, okay. That. I was like, yeah, I'll shoot out this window. There might be a guy in there. There might be a memory capsule or something. And it was like, no, you can just shoot the window. I did not even know that. Which is like, fine. I'm not going to complain about being able to break a window, I guess. But like, you know, that may, it, my brain is always just like, okay, the developers put this in. Probably put in for a reason. <laughs> so let me let me try and find out what the, And then it's like, no, it's just you can just break the window. This ain't no red <laughs> faction. <laughs> Destructible environments. Uh, before we get to the boss of the area, do you want to do our patented break? Yes. All right, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's pop our limit breaker and take Ooh. a limited break. Love it. All right. See you in the edge. in the future. Boss time. Boss. Actually, you know what? There is a little uh before we actually get right to the boss, like on our way to him, there actually is a a kind of neat set of corridors at the end of this area that we were just talking about that I kind of like. It is kind of a neat, like, there's only one direction to go, run and gun, a bunch of enemies pop out. Some of them are behind you sometimes. Some of you... them are strafing slowly. Yeah. Which as is... soon as I fell down a ledge and I turned up and like, well, no turning back now. Like, this must <laughs> yeah. be where the boss is. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's kind of just like the there is a point of no return in this level. Like it's not yeah. just like oh I yeah. can backtrack now because you actually have to. There jump are a lot down. of points where I was able to like, go with all the way back to the beginning of the stage still. Yeah, and I was very surprised. But uh, right before we entered the warehouse that we've been trying to get to, I guess uh, the, that that kid explained we were trying to get to that the dying um, WRO member explained briefly at the start of it, and that's then the right, kid that's also right. mentioned that we saw maybe last episode before. The WR of flanks this warehouse and gets slaughtered by Rosso. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, that makes sense. But uh, well, we see a bunch of WRO members on the other side of a chain link fence, right? Is that what you're about to talk about? I was gonna say that um there's a jukebox right before it and Oh no, I was about to say, like before that, that was a really fun just indulgent kind of it feels like a treat that as you're going down, like shooting maybe one guy and then two guys, you get to the end where there's a chain link fence, you see the jukebox on the other side, yeah. but all the uh the deep ground members like, yeah deep ground members are like oh he's here and they all start crowding around explosive barrels yeah well okay, so they, <laughs> so they all start crowding around explosive barrels and so i shot the first one and it didn't kill any of them it just didn't damage them and i was like there's two what of them, though. Yeah. You, yeah you have to shoot it uh while holding right for it to damage them <laughs> <laughs> the second one worked uh, but yeah whatever uh yeah, lucky there's no quick time events in here yeah, yeah, I was pretty pissed about these uh, jukeboxes because I ran into a, a thing where I had way too much machine gun bullets. Like I was capped out, and I was trying to pick them up, and it was like, "Oh, I'm missing 60." I'm like, "Okay, let me backtrack to the jukebox. I'm gonna sell 60 of them, pick it up, you know, get a little extra gill." And then as I was going through and selling, it's like, "Oh, you just can't sell ammo at all. It's not even <laughs> like an option to be like one gill per thing." I was like, "Oh, yeah. that kind of sucks." Guess so. you're stuck using the Griffin. <laughs> yeah, so I was just using using it like I uh, like it was going out of style. Honestly, that's probably not a bad idea. Is just like rotate your loadout per, to like certain gun bases. Like, well, I have a machine ton of machine ammo. Yeah. I might as well make the Griffin as good as it can be for a little bit, just so I can use it up and conserve the other ammo. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's mostly. Yeah, fun. like I didn't have a lot of Hydra ammo. Yeah, yeah. I think it's mostly. But I was gonna say what's nice is a. Uh, the high potions are only like 300 gil. So before a boss, you can just use all your high potions and then buy them all back for like 600 gil. So you kind of use it as a, a healing station in a way. I'm I'm interested to see if this game is going to get like difficult enough or like I'm going to get in depth enough with it to like realize how, you know, like what's a waste of gil versus what's not. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I was like, at one point I was like, oh, let me just definitely buy a lot of ammo because I did run out of ammo in the first chapter. And then I was just like, that seems like it's actually a waste of gill. And like, <laughs> obviously you just want to dump all your gill into weapon upgrades. And you can do that if you, at the end of the level, get a bunch of gill, then you can get more OP weapons. But like, you know, yeah, yeah, I feel like it's like not, I don't want to say the word balanced because I feel like that might be giving it too much credit, but I think it's, it's presented in a way that it doesn't really matter. Like, yeah, you have. yeah. it's not like Resident Evil where you're going to run out of ammo and be like, well, fuck, I'm kind of soft locked now. Yeah, right. No, I agree. They, they do a pretty good job about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we enter the warehouse and there's a, a big old dude in the warehouse. So Rosso's not here. She's, she's nowhere to be found. 
But instead, there's a raven from Metal Gear Solid. Uh, yeah, this is just straight up a Metal Gear Solid like yeah. part. This guy's this guy's real uh, macho though. I love him. Like he comes on just yelling. He has a, a looks like he has a sword in in one sheath and like a bazooka on the other shoulder, and he just starts flexing and just like doing lots like, of JoJo, JoJo poses. poses. Yeah. yeah. JoJo. <laughs> um, but yeah, he has like a uh, his rocket launcher also has like a shield on the front, which is kind of cool. So he can fire it from behind a little like shoulder and face shield. I thought that was like a neat design touch. Like a jousting. Um, but he's also like accompanied by a ton of soldiers. So there's like two on his left and right. And then there's two up in the rafters or on the catwalks on the left and on your right. Um, and when the battle begins, they all just start firing at you at once. Just go, go for I it. I died very fast the first time. Like, well, this sucks. I, I, got, I, I got was planning on dying. dying. Yeah, because they were shooting me super fast. My HP was just like, turn me into Swiss cheese, right? And I was able to get behind something, and I was like, well, I'll just let them shoot me, and then I'll try again. But I was able to just stand behind this one column for like 20 seconds, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I guess they're not hitting me. I guess I will use a potion and like <laughs> and go back at them. So yeah, I'm wondering if the uh, well, Alex, you said you died pretty quickly, right? Yeah, I was mostly my first instinct was just to run up to the top and take care of the four snipers yeah. two on each side of the map because they're pretty weak. So you can just kind of just use melee to wipe them out pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, um, they're, they're the worst. And then just whip out one of my limit breaks because I have two of those. Yo, up. so I use the limit break on this boss. And let me tell you, with the uh, with the melee, you, my first melee attack would do like 160, 170 damage, and the second one in the in the string would do like 340, 350. So I just tapped like oh twice, and then let let it reset, and then I would do it again and let it reset and do it again. And the second one will actually launch the enemy as well, and you can still hit the enemy when they're on the ground. <laughs> and so like, Sick. I would like limit break, and I would go at the boss hit him he would fall down and then i would just keep doing that like two thing and by the time he stood up like over half of his health is gone in one combo so this boss took like like once i started fighting the boss it was like seven or eight seconds long of a fight we actually can just ignore everyone else apparently i i did what you did as soon as, actually before the episode starting i was like i'm gonna do my homework i did this the right way once <laughs> like should take out everyone else and then him yeah. But this time I took out the snipers, then ran down to limit break and basically just stun locked him underneath the stairs. So he just gets stuck <laughs> in a corner and just like whittle them down. And they, they can't touch you because your your health is very, very high. And of course, your attack is. Yeah, limit break is a full health restore, too. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that, too, because I like how you guys just use the bully strats of knocking yeah. them down and then punching them while they're on the ground or like <laughs> trapping them in a staircase and just beating the shit out of them. Um, <laughs> what I did was I, I, I had a Phoenix down like ready to go because again I think you can only hold like two or three of those and I yeah. found a couple I think two yeah I found a couple but I couldn't pick them up so I was like oh, I'll just pop it and so I don't think I was ever like actually in any danger of like getting a game over or anything but like my health got pretty low pretty quickly in this and I was just running around trying to take out all the ads before going for the boss and um, and then I was like just going around clicking pop ups <laughs> <laughs> um but uh I I, I, I had like low HP and I was like, okay, well I can use like high potions or I can dip into my potions or I just found a limit breaker. I'm at three limit breakers. I don't want to get into a situation where I just like haven't used these. So fuck it. I'm going to use it. I used that, got the full health restore and then killed all the, all the other guys. And by the time I started fighting this boss, like the, the actual boss, my limit break was kind of running out. I could have popped another one, but I was like, ah, let me see how he is with guns and I'll just do the same thing if my health gets low. And I was just using like the short barrel gun on him yeah. and I was doing like 150 damage each time. So I took him <laughs> out pretty easily, even without the limit break. Yeah, he's not too bad. Now I have the, when I played this, I've played through a good bit of the game before we started uh, recording the podcast at all. And I did fight him with just the gun and, like, tried to do it, I guess, like, strategically or whatever. Um, and it is kind of an interesting fight. He has, like, multiple phases that he goes through. I didn't see any of them this time because I just <laughs> fucking, like, melted him. But um, Sorry, devs. Yeah, yeah. sorry. I know you put a lot of hard work into this battle, but... But you also um, put some work into the Limit Breaker, which is just the you win <laughs> button. <laughs> but uh, he, um, at first, he uses his rocket launcher. And at a certain point, he will uh, switch over to his sword and try to, like, rush you and then fight you with the sword. And you have to, like, dodge it and 
hit him back, which is actually pretty cool. And uh, when he's using his rocket and his guns, there's a phase when he like brings out guns and fires them at you. Uh, you can use the columns to try to stand behind because he fires them at a pretty decent rate. So if you're not hiding behind something, he can just like whittle all your HP down really quickly. So the best option, become a galleon beast, baby. Yeah, just kill him. <laughs> just kill him. Become unkillable. <laughs> yeah, and it's not a big deal. He just, uh, the fight ends as soon as you kill him. So again, you can just skip the other dudes. Yep. And he just says, how could I? And then just croaks. Yep. And it's all fine. It's all good. And then Vincent leaves. He doesn't look around for anything or clues or or anything. He just leaves no, the warehouse. He just, he just leaves. So, yeah. fuck that place. Fuck those 500 missing people. Meanwhile, uh, Rosa has moved outside. Yeah, Rosa's outside. And she's just again talking to herself. You know, this is the first time I've ever felt the rain on my skin. But then again, I hadn't even seen the sky until a few days ago. Which is kind of interesting. I like that as a a narrative hook for me. Yeah. And it works that you're like, wait, why has she never seen the sky until a few days ago? Like, that's that's interesting. It certainly is evocative. It's like the first thing in this game that's made me want to learn more about it. About Deep Ground? Yeah, yeah. Like, the, yeah. I feel like this game's good at, like, at least now on this chapter, like, sprinkling in just little bits like that to make you be like, oh, yeah, I actually do want to see what's going on with this, yeah. this character a little Deep bit. Deep Ground, born and raised. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's extremely campy and very stupid, but, like, again, just... Especially just talking to yourself, like, this is why you need sidekick characters so you can actually talk to someone yeah. about yeah. things and like just shoot the shit and have exposition instead of talking to no one. Yeah, this is well, very speaking of talking to somebody, I, I actually like this little turnaround too because the, like, the camera's on her while she's talking and then it starts to pull back and you realize that Vincent is just standing there looking at her. <laughs> so he's just hearing her talk like to herself. Yeah, real it's insult says It's my turn. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> But she sees him and she's like, oh, you're Vincent Valentine, keeper of the proto-materia. And we did hear that from Azul, didn't we? The proto-materia? Or, um, or the girl. Azul or, yeah. um, or the Yellow girl, she, or whatever she's, her name is. Yeah, yeah, whatever her name is. She's what like, is the proto-materia, give it to me. We don't, have her, we don't know her name yet. Oh, we don't? Okay. Yes. But I'm assuming she also has a color associated with her. Probably. Uh, speaking of colors, I think we've recently found out what's fiets mean. Which yeah, yeah, means. yeah. It literally means color. <laughs> <laughs> so. so. So color the color of the colors. But yeah, keeper of the proto materia. My favorite. Uh, what's the uh, what's the band that you like that has the colors album? Between the Bear and Me. The bear. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. I, I was gonna say my brother, my brother and me. <laughs> Between my brother and Between me. the buried <laughs> and the my brother, my brother and me. <laughs> Yeah, she says, uh, the proto-materia, we know you have it, after Vincent does the thing where he just repeats what she just said. Proto-materia? Yeah, and she says that it's the key to, um, what's it called? Controlling Omega. Omega. Which, like, I like, feel like, by this point in Final Fantasy history is now established as a thing, that we have Ultima Weapon and Omega Weapons, right? Oh yeah, that big yeah. Which well, I guess we don't know that it's a weapon, but like... I, I assumed it was, but that's also just with prior Final Fantasy knowledge. Um, that's the thing. Yeah, it's now been established that there are Omega things. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we've, we've we've addressed other weapons in uh, 7. Yeah. And we've talked about Omega, like Ultima, uh, Ultima and Omega. And, that's right. Uh, in 10. And X. Yeah. You know, during and a, that bonus dungeon. There's also right. that in 8. There's the same spoilers for 8, I guess. but um, The plot-heavy yeah, Omega boss in there Final was Fantasy no, 8. There was, yeah, there was no um, Omega weapon in Final Fantasy VII, right? I think it was just like Ruby. No. The, the, the Sviet weapon. This this is the Omega. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he, um, she does the uh, classic villain thing of being like, if you hand it over now, I'll kill you quickly. Yeah. Which I was like thinking about that. And I was just like, if I ever wanted anything, that would be the worst way to try to get it because it just incentivizes somebody to try to like fight back against you. Yeah. Like you're not gonna you're not gonna get it that way, <laughs> ever. Never, never. But uh, I like that. Like Vincent just says nothing. Also, in the scripts that we're looking at right now, uh, that Alex has so graciously provided for us, um, the the direction note here is Vincent stares at her 
He is unamused with a <laughs> exclamation point beside it. So now, I did, like you, the, did you write this script, Alex, or no? I I I, uh, I formatted those. So it's a lot easier. Oh, to read. okay. Cool. I just like this. Is, he is unamused. <laughs> um, like, once again, yeah, he's silent. Yeah, she, uh, not one to bargain. Yeah, not one to bargain. Are we? Then I'll yeah, make, I'll you, make suffer. you suffer. And then the the narrator, our favorite new narrator, says, using her super hyphen speed, she appears <laughs> behind Vincent. Nothing personal, kid. Yeah, she's about to just take off his head, but he easily uh, scuffles out of the way, and it quickly reveals that her uh, sword is also a gun. Yeah, yeah. She, like, <laughs> tries to, like, slice him several ways, and he, like, nimbly dodges out of the way and, like, gets away from her, and then she, like, kind of, like, aims it at him, and it turns out that it's also a gun that he's able to, like, barely dodge as well. And then there's something here that is, makes me extremely confused in terms of direction because we see him do a little hop, hop, hop he, over a fence. He jumps over a wall <laughs> and then immediately she punches him. Yeah. It's like, wait, where did did she catch up to him? Did they just like forget to like they, insert that, <laughs> that shot? And we, they need just, like, to, then... we need to recut this and just have it say real missing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in Planet Terror. <laughs> <laughs> they have all of the plot just in a missing reel. <laughs> so that's what it means that you're L. Ray. <laughs> it reminds me of that super edit someone made of uh, Neo and uh, Ancient Smith fighting in the subway. Oh, with the 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 thought it was the funniest fucking thing and then just so happened to rewatch the matrix like a couple weeks later and i saw that and started cracking up and like when you see it in the thing it's not like it's not too out of place or anything but like seeing it in the quick cuts is hilarious it's not like voldemort when he does the like bleh, like thing where even in the moment you're like that's fucking dumb as shit like i haven't seen it but i'm very much looking forward to <laughs> watching it now I'll, it's really good i will uh link in the show notes <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you're right though. He like she like mysteriously so she teleports to wherever he jumps to, I guess. Which is super far away, yeah, because he like jumps off of like three different boxes all the way up. Like things that if you were in front of in the actual game, you would not be able to clear. Yeah. <laughs> like, and like <laughs> like she either like just teleported into it or for a second, like, is this supposed to tell us that she can like remote punch? Because we see her throw the punch and see him go th into a wall, but like we don't actually see the contact, so I was wondering if it was like Oh, yeah. she can punch from far oh, away. Oh, like, yeah. No, it's just I'm, I'm, revi I'm reviewing the footage now. I'm trying to see if it like it's like, it's like the first still... time when she teleports behind him. There's it cinematically shows that she has teleported or like quickly moved, right? Yeah. And like you're supposed to be like, oh my gosh, she's so fast or whatever. But this one, there's just like when we say that she teleports to the other side of the wall, it's. Oh yeah, no, she's not fully like did. we see her disappear and then appear at the other side of the wall. And it's not like they like It's just it shows him jump and then her punching immediately. Immediately. No, no yeah, like, like black like, screen in between, no like any kind yeah, of yeah. Ugh. This game is perfect, is yeah, what we're trying to rules. say. Perfect Speaking in every of way. things that rule, Vincent turns into a cool fucking like goth devil demon. man. Yeah, he turns into devil man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um be Yeah, like he stands up and you kind of see like an aura, like a dark aura around him. Which is a and chaos is what it is. is yeah, what, yeah, chaos makes is sense. Is this what was his, like one of his limit breaks in seven where he turns into like a devil? Thing? It is called chaos. Is yeah, I think, final wasn't that little, his final one? Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah, he has like a, he, it's a little more humanoid in this where like his face still, he looks almost like a uh, fucking like evil Lynn from fucking <laughs> like Power Rangers. Uh, his hair is kind of turned into like a mane and he, yeah. looks, he has a glowing something in it where his heart is yeah man. Uh, it's really he's, he's cool. iron man yeah he's iron man but he kind of went yeah he, uh, he goes super saiyan while in that and just it creates like a, a giant orb of like energy that just blasts <laughs> her back yeah yeah it does yeah and uh yeah she she reels back kind of shocked what the fuck's going on and then oh. we see the big the big pink explosion something happens and then vincent's back to his normal self and passes yeah. out right well i guess we're like to assume that like his big blast knocked her out or so far away that she can't access him now yeah. because she's just not she's a threat no anymore for picture, some reason. Yeah. yeah. So, so she's dead. 
Thank God we don't have to fight her as a boss. Because <laughs> um, immediately after that, uh, Vincent like passes out, right? And he yeah. um, kind of slowly comes to. He's like regaining and losing consciousness, and then he sees uh, Shalua start approaching him, right? Yeah, um, it, so it's, it's very funny too because he's just kind of standing there, like stoically in his human form and like the camera's kind of zooming in slowly on him and then he just like completely like s- like stiff as a board falls backwards <laughs> and that- he's got big feet everyone in this game has big feet yeah <laughs> is this post kingdom hearts yeah i mean we saw that little girl as well just like a kingdom hearts character but yeah it's just it's just funny like he sh- because he has no way of falling forward because of how big his feet are, he's just going to fall backwards. <laughs> yeah, but um, that that's the end of that stage, right? Yep. Yeah. How do y'all do? Oh, uh, well, let, let's find out. Let's let's consult I the, the took a the picture tape. of it. Uh, I did pretty good. What's everyone's accuracy? Let's start with that. Yeah, accuracy is like the most variant one. Yeah, I got 49%, which was a C. I will say for... Ha- okay, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Especially with the griffin, I'm like, it's always missing. So just- Yeah. I got 47%. Nice. Even though I could not aim to the right, 63% this B. This fucking triumph. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because of the handicap. You, you yeah, I had more to place careful. my shots more carefully. <laughs> here's, a, here's another important one for you guys. How much Mako did you collect? All of it. 100%. Yeah, percent. me right, too. Good. I thought I was going to be the only one. but How about damage sustained? Damage sustained. I did uh, 7,903 damage, which was a D. Okay. Took a lot of damage, no. but... I also got a D. I got over yeah. 7,000 as well. I got 10,797. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> what, what was that ranking? <laughs> uh, Chapter ranking was a B. No, no. So I mean for the, um, the damage Still itself. a D. Okay, okay, so D is the lowest. Okay. I mean, maybe. I don't know. If I miss every shot, but still pass the stage, that'd be very funny. <laughs> I, killed, uh, I killed 77 targets, which was S. I got 76, nice. also S. 74. Nice. What uh, what time did y'all get? 47 minutes and 15 seconds. Okay. 35. 56, probably because I was idling a lot trying to get my screenshot button to work. I also spent a lot of time trying to do the float. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Was, I was trying to see if I can jump over the gate you were trying to get the key card for. Like, I wonder if I can just skip this and not have to deal with this kid. Yeah, I, I tried doing a lot of, like, backtracking and ex- exploring just to make sure I, you know, I, I tried doing my due diligence after the, yeah. the 10-minute chapter. <laughs> How many snipers did How you many get? snipers did you all kill? Oh, let me see here. I had a 31 keychain. Oh, I, I did 13 of 15. Me too. Mm, Where's those which, last two at? Mm. There must be some extras in that like last uh, run of the stage. I bet. Maybe so. How many boys yeah. did you guys save? <laughs> this is a, a boys quest. I um zero out of one. Could not. I could not save his soul. <laughs> Wait, really? No, I did save him. I don't know that you can get by without saving you, him. You didn't save his soul, though, because you are exactly basically Satan. It just uh, showed us and that's right. helping him out and him him requesting to Satan that you avenge his parents. I was able to save. You can't him save sni- that soul. <laughs> I was able to save him from Vincent. snipers, but I could not save him from himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't think you can not save him. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. I'm no expert. Don't let the fact that I'm talking into a podcast microphone about it. I'm not As we've expert. said, like a dog will just get him and wait for you. To yeah, they up. just waited for me. <laughs> yeah, you have to try pretty hard to not save the boy. It's, it's Actually, that like, would be kind of exciting. Like if you could just like let it like like the dog would just carry him off and then the game would progress somehow. It'd be like, well, <laughs> you fucked up. <laughs> but here yeah, you go. I think he has to unlock the door for you, right? To get to the key card. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so unless like the guy comes out that has the key card, like, well, you fucked up, but here's the guy. Yeah, here's the Thank guy. <laughs> well, flawless game design as always. So, yeah, this is when <laughs> I out of finally cashed in for money because everything okay. up to this point I've been doing XP just to kind of I like investing in my stats early. Yeah, just to make uh, gameplay a little better. Sure. Um, and then investing in cash later so I can upgrade. I actually did levels this time. Uh, yeah, I did. Levels, money levels thus far. I am going to do a straight only EXP playthrough. That's what I'll do. That's what I did this time. Experience only. Yeah, I'm going to do the experience build. We'll see if it makes any difference. I kind of have a feeling that it's not going to. (laughs) We'll see if it pays off. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Do we want to continue on to the next 
cutscene. I have not watched it, but if you would like to do it, yeah. I'm more than willing to make snarky commentary. So, since Vincent has passed out, chapter is over. Uh, we we wake back in the. Um, I guess not awake. We dream or flashback to uh, Vincent. What is a dream but being awake at nighttime in your mind? Damn. Well, when you put it that way. Um, that sounds like some shit they would say in this fucking game. <laughs> 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 We're back in La Lucretia's Lucretia. I don't even know if it's Lucretia I or think Lucretia. It's Lucretia. I don't know. They say Lucretia. Yeah, he says Lucretia in one of the uh, cutscenes. Well, but you know what? I don't even take the things that happen in Final Fantasy as canon anymore. <laughs> like, like, I feel like I know better. Than, there's than only than one canon, put. okay? In Final Fantasy VII, there's only one canon, and it's called the Sister Ray. God damn it! Damn true. <laughs> All else is fucking bullshit. Can't argue with that one. She's uh, Lu- Lucrezia is in Hella Crystals, which is cool. I thought you were gonna say she is in Hell, but I was like, Ooh. <laughs> well, that yeah. as well. That as well. We, who's to judge? <laughs> Damn, Vincent, I hate to hear that for you. Your old lady's in Hell. <laughs> Damn, Vincent, I'm sorry that happened to you, or happy for you, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but this is just kind of reminding you, I guess, that Lucrezia or that they're just basically the same thing as the first cutscene with her, where it's just like her just saying sorry and he's asking why. Something <laughs> echoing, she says awake, and he asks awake, and then she says I'm so sorry. And then we're flashing back again. This time we're, I think, I think we actually saw this cutscene in Final Fantasy VII to some degree. Yeah, I think this is in uh, uh, Icicle Inn, right? Uh, maybe, maybe, or in, yeah, Gast's Lab, right? Yeah. I forget where well, that was this, in the game. This is taking place in the Shinra mansion. Yeah, which... I forget where we learned that Vincent got shot. This is basically the cutscene we saw in 7 where Vincent gets shot by Hojo when he was a turn. That is when we return to the Shinra mansion at the end, I believe. Uh, like, as a side quest, and we learn about Zack and everything. Ah. I think, I think. I think but. you're right. I, I also couldn't wrap my head around it, because when I think of Hojo and uh, Lucrezia and all that, I just think of the Icicle in. Um, well, that was... Um, oh, that was uh, Aerith's mom. Aerith's mother, yeah. Right, 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 right. Okay, well, a lot of, a lot of people die in these games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or do they? Find out in the remake, I guess. I suppose. <laughs> I suppose we will. So yeah, Hojo's got a big ass fucking gun. We're just seeing the cutscene again in higher resolution and better models. And yeah, Hojo, because the the scene we saw in uh, Icicle Inn. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but um, no, please go ahead. The scene we saw in Icicle Inn was when Hojo came to take back Aerith's mom, and he shoots Professor Gast. That's Gast tries uh-huh. to stick up for her. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was confusing, which which makes more sense because I was like, it looks like the Shinra Mansion, but is that a a continuity thing or a retcon yeah. thing? But it, uh, that may, I'm I'm glad that you brought that up because we I, did see. I'm pretty sure there is at least one scene of Vincent as a Turk in the original FF7, I but think now I right. can't remember when it is. Yeah. Or well, of what? What we're going to do for next week as well is we're just going to go back uh, for this season, play through all of the original again. We're going to discuss it all again, and we'll have the answers next time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we did see it. It's when we go to get um, Vincent's... Uh, well, when we go to Lucretia's cave. Oh, uh, yeah. Which, it makes sense. Yeah. This is like, yeah, so we're flashing back from Lucretia's cave into the cutscene, which is a recap. We see the Turks going to Shinra Mansion with Gast and uh, Ifalna. Is that her name? Lucretia and Hojo, I believe. Right, right. That's it. Yeah, because this, this is something different. Um, right, right. That makes sense. I'm, I'm, I'm all confused with <laughs> Doctor's it's doctor. Because, because Lucretia <laughs> is a scientist. Like, she is also part of the science team. And right. he's there as a Turk, like, protecting the science team. So it is... Gast, Hojo, and Lucrezia are there. And this is where, like, the little screen, the text comes up and says, like, after that, a child was born. That child's name was Sephiroth. So Hojo and Lucrezia are technically the biological parents of Sephiroth. Right. Oh, yeah. And then Vincent confronts Hojo in the lab. Yeah. Shinra Mansion. About experimenting on their child. Yeah. And, right. Yeah. And, like, injecting and, him with Genova cells. And he's like, oh, it's wrong. You can't do that. Hojo shoots Vincent. And then operates on him, causing him to become the vampire monster that he is now. Which I guess is what we're learning about. I'm assuming. I don't to know yet. The, I have the, the vampire monster that we all know and love. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming. I don't know this. I suppose this is what we're going to find out or whatever. But like judging from that, I'm guessing that Hojo 
implants Vincent with the proto materia, and that's why he's a beast or whatever. Is yeah. how I'm guessing that this will play out. I don't know. That, that would make yeah, sense. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of how they've been setting it up. Yeah. Especially with like Hojo still maybe being alive or whatever. Like, yeah. Showdown with Hojo part two coming soon. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be on the beach again. In his yeah, fuck yeah. Speedo Hojo. <laughs> but yeah, in this game, we do see it all from uh, Turk Vincent's point of view where he's on the ground. We see Hojo kind of like getting excited, like, ah, yes, like for my next, a new body for my next experiment. Like, I. Like, I can justify my past failures, finally. Yeah. We do see briefly, like, from Vincent's point of view, getting off of the uh, the table like we saw in FF7. Yeah. Him with his new powers and just feeling like, I don't feel so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we do. We, yeah, we see that scene. Uh, there we go. Okay. Again. And in the original scene, um, there's no dialogue here. We kind of just see, like, the pantomiming that happened in Final Fantasy VII of Vincent confronting Hojo and getting shot. Um, yeah. But here we get the whole thing, you know, where Hojo just keeps saying, silence! <laughs> <laughs> also, but when... In uh, both scenes, we do get uh, the FF7 and Dirge Service, him getting off of the table. It is, like, funny in FF7, he literally is on a table with, like, books and shit still on it. Yeah. <laughs> he gets yeah. off the table and does a little, like, head grab and yelly. They were like, people might not even well. find this character. We're not going to add a different fucking texture here. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's pretty much it until we uh, wake up in a new cutscene, which I think we'll touch on next week. Yep. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, that was chapter three. And what a chapter. <laughs> what a chapter what a it was. It's uh, very wet. It'll be interesting to kind of um, go back after we finish this and just watch all of the cutscenes. Um, not that the gameplay isn't like fun cause I am enjoying it and it's not like long enough to like really feel like a slog or anything, but I feel like the, the backstory and the lore is probably going to be pretty cool. Yeah. I, we'll do a, on YouTube, they always have like a game and then the movie and all it is, is just like all the cutscenes from a game taken out and then nice. thrown together on YouTube. So we'll just watch Dirge of Cerberus, the movie in 1080. It's like five hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot when you think about it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, There's a lot, sure. of, a lot of cutscenes. Um, but they've all been pretty you know, well done. Solid is uh, even more. Yeah, I'm excited for next time. I've I have played the next episode as well um, before, not recently. Cool music, but I did die on it twice, so that'll I think be exciting. I watched you die on that part. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. So, so I'm excited we'll, for that. We'll see how many deaths we all take. All right, I'll be keeping track. As in the ending stat screen will be keeping track for me. Currently, the thing that I'm tracking, the cape count of when he does a cool cape move. Um, Ooh. We, got a, we got another one. I think I can't remember if that was last week or this week or when, but it was like in a cut scene. So I'm counting that one because it, it hasn't happened too <laughs> often. So. so up to four? I think it's a three right now. Three? Okay. There might be a fourth that I didn't track because it was I the see, first one that he did in a cut scene. I was like, oh. Okay, gotcha. Who knows? Who cares? <laughs> well, do y'all have anything to announce? Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. We did do a watch last week of uh, Advent Children. Um, we, we might be doing more viewing parties like that in the Discord, so come by, yeah, hang out. It's a good excuse to join us. Eventually, eventually I won't be working as insanely as I have been <laughs> in the past year, and I can hang out in there more often. I, miss I, have an, I have an exciting announcement that by the time this comes out, will have happened a week and a half ago, but because it is a podcast medium, you'll still be able to go enjoy it. I did get to go beyond daycare dittos for the coughing oh, episode. Yeah. So go listen to that. Go listen to daycare dittos. It's a lot of fun. We talk about buttholes a lot because it's coughing and how coughing suspiciously looks like the coronavirus. It's a good time. <laughs> I'm very excited to listen to that episode. <laughs> I love that little fart orb. Love that yeah. little fart orb. He's so good. He's a good one. He's a very good one. He's the best one, I would say. Ooh. I remember when that was uh, the coughing in your hat was like your avatar everywhere. It was, indeed. Oh, shit. Good yeah, one. I remember that, I think. Before we all had uh, Mai do all of our portraits. Yeah. Yep. yep. Lovely. Um, no real announcement for me. Uh, you can check out my YouTube, I guess, and subscribe there, but if you do do that, then I'll probably want to put more production into my playthrough of Dirge of Cerberus, which this is said something... Doo-doo. <laughs> Carl, I have one note. Yeah. I think it needs more word art. More word <laughs> art? I can definitely make that happen, for sure. I, I agree. I also have that written down as my, uh, my big complaint about my own production. So, the, the backstory there is obviously I'm playing it on Twitch. I don't really have a lot of time to put time into twitch alone which is kind of my main focus on that kind of shit uh so i'm not going to do more 
to YouTube that I need to, but <laughs> I didn't want to just dump a YouTube video on there and then have people in the comments be like, stop talking to chat or like, you know, like this editing sucks or whatever. So like I have a little disclaimer at the beginning. It's pretty funny about how I'm not doing this for YouTube, but if I get incentivized to, maybe I will. So, but yeah, it's, you know, my playthrough. You can check it out if you want. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing going on. I have reached affiliate and have not streamed since. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Just that's never the way to stream do it. again. I just want the goose emotes. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I got what I came for and I'm done. <laughs> but yeah, nothing nothing on my end. All right. Well. Uh, have everyone have a good President's Day. Um, thank your local president. Yeah, go th- go um, celebrate thank all the good presidents that we've president. had. Every single one of our U.S. presidents who have been good. You can go and not thank a them. stinker among those. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Literally none of them. Well, Alex, would you like to teleports behind us? <laughs> Nothing personal, kid. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess thank you to Masashi Hamauzu for the game music. Um, there's some really fun tunes. Like, I think something in this kind of very much reminded me of Final Fantasy X. He's like a lot of just whipping out some of those similar vibes. Uh, next episode has some really cool kind of jazzy breakbeats mm. and stuff. I think is really cool, especially when you're just like sneaking around. Um, leave us a review on iTunes if you so wish. Uh, leave us a message at 530 Materia. And you can find us at every FNFF on Twitter, Instagram. And again, join our Discord. The commissioner keeps telling me I'm wasting my time podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> what are you podcasting for? My reason to live. <laughs>